lined up. Today is our third episode in Unbridled Unity. And this episode is called Through the Horse's Eyes. And what this is all about is as we are creating that deep relationship with our horses that evolves into a powerful partnership, we have responsibilities that we need to uphold in this relationship and partnership. And our horses have responsibilities um, that they need to uphold. And we're first addressing the women's. The first one, um, you can find the list on uh, in this series. The first one was harmony in horses. The second one is mastering the art of balance. And this one is through the eyes of horses. And I love this particular one. Actually, I love them all. And the more that I have learned to uphold my responsibilities on my end, the more that my horses um, recognize that it's truly a partnership and that they too have um, their responsibilities. So what do I mean when I say through the eyes of horses, seeing the world as our horses do, learning to think like a horse. Because if we are attempting to earn our horses trust as their leader, we need to learn how they see the world because they truly see it differently than we do. You know, uh, we see binocularly and they see monocularly, which means they see two different worlds. They don't see directly in front of them, directly above them, underneath their neck, directly behind them, obviously under their belly. So when we are working with them and engaging in activities or simply grooming or moving around them, it's important that we keep those things in, in mind because when we walk straight up to a horse and they don't get to catch us out of either eye, we can startle them. Or if something is coming straight at them, if we don't allow them to turn their heads to see out of preferably both eyes, but at least one eye, they're getting ambushed. I've seen so many people be grooming their horse that's tied up, tied to the trailer, tied to a hitching post, cross ties, um, slide underneath the horse's neck, and then the horse spooks and they get in trouble or they get startled. And they should not be reprimanded for that. You were over here and all of a sudden you disappeared and you're over here. And it startles them. Or if little kids, or um, I see people working with flags um, or bags around their horses or slickers, and they'll be rubbing them on one side and disappear under the neck to go to rub them on the other side. And the horse spooks into them or just spooks. And then they get reprimanded. Well, if we were seeing the world through the horse's eyes, we would recognize that we have sunk into that. We disappeared in their blind spot showed up over here. So when we see things on the trail off in the distance in front of us, horses don't have as good a vision as far as we think they do. So if we see something coming, the best thing to do is allow your horse to turn their head. You know, it, it's interesting how our creator created them because they actually walk down the trail or they walk through life, bobbing their head slightly left to right. And that's so that they can be getting that 360 view all the way around in front of them and all the way around behind them. So let's talk about their blind spot that is above them. This is one that 
uh, when I first learned about it, it, it made me pause and think real hard about my experiences with horses over the years. When we are sitting in the saddle, our horses really can't see us unless they turn their head slightly left and slightly right. So when we're bebopping down the road, the trail, the arena, and we go to pull our jacket off or we fling our arms out like this, our horses catch our, our arm about out to here. And sometimes it'll startle them. I have Dakota, who is one of my riding partners. I love her to pieces, but she spooks at things on her left. So just me gathering up the rein on my left or pulling my rein out to the left or do, pulling something out of my left pocket, she will spook. It was interesting how I discovered that. <laughs> I was riding down the trail. We'd been on the trail for about three hours and we had done a big climb and we're heading back down to the trailer and um, I was gathering up my reins and she caught the glimpse of the, the shadow of her reins out of her left eye and started spinning circles to the right. And I kept trying to gather my reins. And each time I'd gather them, she'd pull her head and I'd lose them. And she'd just keep spinning. And finally, I realized that she was spooking at the reins on her left side. So be aware that when you're in the saddle, you're actually in their blind spot. The other way to think like a horse is horses have four things that are extremely important to them. And as their leaders, we need to be focusing on those four things. First and foremost is safety. They have to feel safe. And safety comes in numbers for herd animals. And when we join our horses in their pen or take them out of their pen, we have become a herd. And so we must too be aware that safety is extremely important to them. Doesn't mean coddle them and cradle them and be super quiet and don't let anybody spook them. That's not what it means. It means be aware that safety is number one. Learn to see, I'm going to go back to the vision for a minute. We see binocularly straight ahead. They see monocularly out on the side. So we do not have a 360 view. But what we can learn to do, and I've learned to really get good at it, is learn to see out of your periphery. So just sitting here listening to this, Pause for a moment, staring at me, and notice, without turning your eyes to the left or the right, notice what you see to your left. I can see my futon and my bookshelf and the window, and to my right, I can see the corner of my office the corner of my desk. So I also know what's in here. So practice seeing out of your periphery. We do it if you drive. We do it when we drive and we don't even know it. But the better that you can get to seeing as far out both sides as you can, you're starting to see the world like your horse does. You're gonna begin to catch things that you normally wouldn't have caught if you were looking straight on. Um, so back to the four things that are important to them, safety, then comfort. They need to feel safe and then they need to be comfortable. And what does that mean? means under saddle, in their bridle, in their environment, with you, going new places. So safety and comfort. Then comes play. They like to play. And believe it or not, the last thing is food. 
because if they don't feel safe and comfortable and relaxed enough to play, they don't want to eat. Now I'm going to go back to Dakota, who is still learning to get comfortable and feel safe on the trail. The way that I judge how well she is doing emotionally is that if I can lean over and tell her to touch, she'll touch my hand and I will give her a cookie. If she's too stressed out, she won't eat the cookie. So that tells me immediately that I she's having a hard time and I need to work to help her feel more safe and comfortable. So that is another way of seeing through your horse's eyes or seeing the way horses see, thinking like horses think. The best thing that we can do for our horses is learn to become very sensory aware because horses are sensory awareness masters, meaning <clears throat> they hear very, very well, but they don't hear the same things we hear. Their hearing is designed to hear rustles in the bushes and sounds of what might be a predator. They, they hear at a different octave and a different decimal than we do. So I practice a lot with my horses when I'm here on the ranch or I'm um, out on the trail with them, gently new mu wild mustangs. I'm always watching their ears, their eyes, their nose, their breathing. And when I hear, when I see their ear flick, I try to take my awareness of my hearing to that direction they've gone and hear if I can hear anything. And if they flick their ear and then they turn and look, now I'm looking as well. So I'm learning to get more sensory awareness so that I can be my horse's leader, one that they find worthy of following. They smell things that we don't smell. So when I see them, you know, their nares kind of blowing, you know, out because they're taking in a smell. I stop and I, I, I don't necessarily stop, but I put my awareness on my smell and I see if I can smell anything different. That one's a hard one. They can feel vibration on the ground, which we cannot. So they can feel if there's other horses coming. They can feel if the earth is shaking. They can, they can feel if a car or if we're riding near railroad tracks, they can feel that vibration under their hoofs. And so sometimes they'll start to get a little antsy or a little worried. And we, to our senses, human senses, we can't see anything in the environment that would make that happen, but they may be feeling something in their feet. So how do you handle that? How do you be more like your horse when it comes to that? Well, it's all about the feel. Can you feel your horse between your legs? Can you feel your horse through your reins? Because if you can get good at feeling your horse and their energy, you're going to feel them when they get tense. You're going to feel them when they relax. You're going to feel when their neck tenses up. So thinking like a horse, seeing the world through the horse's visions, through their eyes, requires that we learn to become more self-aware and more aware of our environment 
and more aware of our horse as our partner. Remember, horses means, main means of communication is body language. It is also the universal language. Humans speak, there's, a, you know, there's different things you'll see, but we'll say 70, 80% of the human's communication is done through body language. So learning to master your body language, their body language, your eyes, your ears, your smell, the taste, you know, I don't know about the taste. We can really, I think we can get away without mastering that one, but you know, sometimes you can taste things in the air. So this is our third responsibility as a horsewoman is to learn to see and feel and hear and think like a horse does. When a horse is leaving their barn, leaving their herd, that is creating a sense of insecurity in them. That's why we have barn sour horses, because they feel safer in their environment with their herd. How do we create horses that don't get barn sour and are eager to go with us? We rise to the occasion and uphold our responsibilities and teach them about theirs so that they feel safe and comfortable with us. And then they will go anywhere with us. So remember how they see, how they hear, how they feel, how they smell, and learn, make it a priority to start to master those things within yourself. And I would love to hear comments below on how you're already doing this, what you learned today that you didn't already know, and do you have any questions about what we went over today? This is big. This is, I have a whole module in my online, or not online, in my 12-month program where we, we dive deep into this because this is big. They're prey animals, we're predators, we're different. Prey animals get worried and bothered and they want to skedaddle or freeze to fight. Predators get worried and bothered and we want to hold on tight and control and confine. And that's no bueno. Those two don't mix. And it's not the horse's job to learn to rise to our occasion. It's our job to learn how to be the best leader we can be for them. All right, ladies, that is the end of our session for this third episode in Unbridled Unity. Next week is going to be our fourth session, and it is going to be the power of focus. And uh, I'm super excited to share that with you. I've just lost my place here, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yes, the power of focus. That is next week. We are going to have a great time with it. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I really like it. Um, I find it to be extremely important with my um, students because um, I don't expect my horse to do anything that I'm not willing to do. And so I can't expect my horse to show up willingly to be my partner and to nurture this relationship when I'm not doing it myself. And, in, and the way that I need to do it is to learn about 
horses and herd dynamics and psychology and physiology and everything horse. And so that's what I've been doing for the last 24 years. And now I'm teaching those who want to learn to have that kind of amazing relationship. I'm teaching you how to do that, how to be the leader that your horse turns to all the time and ask you questions. So I teach this in my program. When my late, when my uh, students start to pick this up, I see their horsemanship and their relationship go from here up to here. So it's important. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you next week.